morning. Can you hear me? Yes. What a docile crowd. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for being here. My name is Michael Thomas. I'm the head of the New England Board of Higher Education. And on behalf of this board and staff, it's a real pleasure to invite you here to Boston on a Monday morning. Uh, we uh, might have gotten you here pre-commute. Hopefully none of you have to deal with too much traffic, but thank you for making the effort to be here. We're very honored to have you here. As you can tell, we've got a notable cast of presenters and speakers and panel members today, and we want to express uh, sincere thanks to them for being here and for their participation. And of course, we want to thank each one of you who know uh, how busy and involved your lives are. If you need to take time out of a, a busy fall Monday morning to venture into Boston, uh, certainly is appreciated by us and hopefully indicative of your interest in the topic and the conversation that we intend to have today. We invite you to be an active participant in that conversation. We want to thank the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, our hosts. We're delighted to be here as in times past and appreciate uh, Bank President Eric Rosen. It's kind of welcome. We look forward to hearing from Bob Trees. And we're appreciative of the other members of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston staff who are here with us today, part of our part of the conversation. I appreciate their, their leadership. Many of you, I think, probably know something about that. I mean, it was created back in the 1950s by the six New England governors who sought to bring the states together to work productively on shared issues and challenges, giving them the mission of providing increased services and resources to the residents of the region, as well as to build collaboration among its 260 plus colleges and universities. And we do that through our focus on access and success and uh, cost savings and affordability, as well as being a platform for regional discussions on critical issues such as those we entertain today. I think some of you are probably familiar with our regional student program. It allows students to talk to them borders to access programs in public institutions at a significant discount, saving families and students about $54 million a year, helping to fill important seats in our regional institutions. We also work on issues of problem-based learning, particularly in STEM, providing professional development and resources throughout the region to two-year and to uh, K-12 institutions. We also have been working recently, as many of you know, on state authorization reciprocity to create a network for reciprocity for the approval and for the uh, authorization of online learning. Also, you're familiar with our other policy and research work and advisory work, as well as our New England Journal of Higher Education, which is certainly one of the foremost platforms for discussion and, and dialogue and conversation throughout the region, focused specifically on higher education. So we've gathered leaders today from New England and beyond, and we've got a representative, uh, representation, obviously, from each of the six New England states, and I think for most of its public and independent institutions, as well as people from beyond the region. And uh, we're here today to sort of wrestle with, I think, one key overarching question, which is how do we ensure that our colleges and universities continue to be the primary engine and the most effective source of talent for our cities, states, and regions? So let me repeat that again. How do we ensure that our colleges and universities continue to be the primary and most effective source of talent for our cities, states, and our region? Uh, we don't necessarily assume to have all of the answers to that question, but we hope that we will have some substantive answers and comments and conversation toward that end today, and in a way that will help you in the work that you do with each of your institutions. So why talk about employability? Well, that's another question we'll be working on in the course of the day. And as you know, there are lots of definitions for the notion of employability. You would probably have one of your own in your institution as well. I've given you an example here. One of the other questions we face is how well do our colleges and universities do in aiding our students to prepare for a world of growing complexity and uncertainty? By some estimations, our capacity to help students and to prepare them is not keeping pace with the speed of change and with the transformation in the world around us. And in brief, we've got a confluence of a number of critical forces and factors. We have labor market projections that suggest an increasing percentage of students are going to need or individuals will need post-secondary education in order to participate in and succeed in the economy. We have regular surveys of employers asserting that they still struggle in many instances to find the skills and the higher order skills that they seek and need in the employees that they hire. We hear from students and parents who are still faced by the rising cost of college who are increasingly concerned about the value of degree and particularly about the ability of a student to find a well-paying and meaningful job after graduation. We're also pushed by the critical imperative 
of student success, increasing completion, particularly for underrepresented groups, and closing achievement gaps. And lastly, of course, the ongoing scrutiny of college costs and a tendency amongst policy leaders to reduce it down to measures of gainful employment and wages upon graduation. So we have a number of forces driving us as we seek to work and to answer the question of how do we define and actualize employability. Let me share with you what I think it is, and also what it's not. We do think it's a combination of knowledge, skills, behaviors, attributes, and attitudes that enable success in life, certainly in work, but particularly in life and citizenship. We think it's applicable to all students, regardless of the type of institution you're at, the type of program you're at, the level you're studying at. We believe that it's rooted in jointly designed qualifications frameworks. We think that it's aligned and integrated with the notion of liberal learning and liberal education. We think that it's a university-wide priority, and that it can be supported by effective policies and programs and practices at the institution level, but also in terms of public policy. What is it not? It's not just about employment and wages. It's not quantified by a single measure. It's not just skill or workforce training. It's not a reduction of academic rigor or standards. It's not just the responsibility of our career services staff. We think it's embedded across all the institution and everyone who engages with students. And it's not just confined to the period before graduation, which is to say it starts early in the process of learning and activity within our institution. Here's an example, probably a little complex for this hour and morning, but uh, here's an example of a framework from institutions in the UK who have been incentivized to think about and to work across institutions as to how they can define and embed the notion of employee, employability in the work that they do. And this really raises the key questions of what has to occur at our colleges and universities in order to achieve employability, what institutional policies and practices are needed, what public policies in our, in our state and states can support it and incentivize it, and what are the respective roles of the stakeholders and how can the collaboration occur. So we invite you today to, enjoy, to join in this conversation. Join us, I think our, tatter, our Twitter hashtag is hashtag talent40. You can also join Nebby at, uh, on Twitter at, at Nebby. We will continue the conversation beyond today through our New England Journal of Higher Education. We encourage you to sign for our weekly uh, email update through uh, the, the journal. We'll also be curating the comments and the video and many of the proceedings of today's conversation. And with that, uh, we'll also keep you informed of a variety of activities that will spring from today's conversation, which Debbie will be working across the region to work with institutional leaders and public policymakers to continue this conversation about employability in the various ways that states and institutions and uh, individuals uh, with an interest, uh, particularly including industry, can work together on this conversation. With that.